basis. All right, so now we are recording. So again, today's lesson is talking about gross margin versus gross profit. So let's dive into it. So yesterday, just to recap really quick, what we talked about yesterday was what we called the profit litmus test. And again, this is a framework that I've been using to help kind of really distill and break down what we talk about when we talk about margin in your e-commerce business. And so we're talking about at the very top line, we've got uh, product margin. Think about that, that's anything related to price, related to your products, related to cost to get sold, average order values, all those sort of things. You got your order margin, which your order margin is, is really focusing on those costs or those things that are related to the individual things on a per order basis. So that could be things like returns. It could be things around discounts, it could be exchanges or warranties, or it could even be the payment processing fees or the, the charge that you have on a per order basis. And then what you've got is you've got your customer margin. And this is the most important one, in my opinion, because if you don't have customers, you don't have a business. And so a lot of times when to get a customer in the door in the first place, you have to spend a bit of money, perhaps through advertising or trade shows or events or things like that to get people in the door. And so your customer margin is how much margin you're making on those customers once they're in the door and starting to generate revenue for you. And then finally, we've got your conversion margin. What your conversion margin is, think of the funnel of your business. The very top, you've got a whole bunch of possibilities of people that you could drive into your business. And as you're whittling things down, hopefully you, at the end of the day, get some customers that are then driving that true revenue for you. So that's the profit litmus test. Before we get into each of the individual product, order, customer, and conversion margins, we have to kind of, first of all, just establish what we would call some key performance indicators or KPIs as I like to call them. And it's a common jargon term that's used a lot in marketing world. I have to again apologize, I use a lot of jargon a lot of times. So hopefully, um, you know, you guys uh, can keep me honest here. And if you have questions specifically about what a term means, please ask it in the chat window. There's a Q&A session at the end as well. And I'll try to answer whatever sort of questions you might have there. So let's start with some quick definitions here. So the first definition would be around gross revenue. And so we've talked a bit about this. I often talked about it as the top line revenue or the gross revenue. But think of that as really the total amount if you took all of the sales of all your products and services before you took anything away, any deductions, any costs, anything like that. And it's usually expressed as an absolute dollar value. So if you did, let's say $1 million in sales revenue or gross revenue, that's the top line revenue. Then the next thing we've got is what we would call your cost of goods sold. And your cost of goods sold is a typical term used to describe the total amount of costs that it takes to manufacture or produce a particular product or service. And then again, expressed as an absolute value. So you can think of this as, let's say you're making, um, let's say a pair of shoes or you're making a piece of clothing, or maybe you're making a piece of jewelry, or maybe it's a coffee bean, whatever that cost is to put all those pieces together and make that particular finished product, that would be what you define as your cost of goods sold. Then from there, we've got the two terms we've been talking about interchangeably today. The first one being gross margin. And our gross margin is, is if you can get your head around our gross margin, then gross profit will be really easy. But gross margin is basically the difference between those two. So if you take your gross revenue, divide it by your cost, or subtract it from your cost of goods sold, and then divide it over top of your gross margin, you're going to get to a gross margin percentage. Similarly, if you look at gross profit, gross profit is the difference between your revenue at the top line versus your cost of goods sold and then the absolute number. So really the difference is between one is expressed as a dollar value versus one is expressed as a percentage value. And the easiest way to illustrate that is probably through my quick little math lesson here. And so let's take, for example, a retailer that does a million dollars in revenue and it costs them $500,000 in cost of goods sold. So first of all, we're gonna talk a bit about how to calculate gross margin. And like I said, if you can understand how to calculate gross margin, then you'll be able to understand gross profit a lot easier. It's just one, again, is a percentage versus the one's a dollar figure. So let's look at the formula. This is how you calculate gross margin. You take your gross revenue number minus your cost of goods sold over top of the gross revenue number. So if we take that example, million dollars in revenue minus $500,000 in cost of goods sold, divide that by a million dollars in revenue, you end up with 50% gross margin, okay? Now, on the flip side of the equation, the gross profit number, this is where it gets easy now. So if you got gross margin, you can figure out gross profit. So gross profit is very simple. You take your gross revenue 
minus your cost of goods sold, and that will yield you your gross profit. So if you take a million dollars minus $500,000, you're gonna be left with $500,000. So the math, as you can see, the math's pretty simple, but what I wanted to make sure is lay the foundation to understand, well, how does gross mar margin and gross profit then play into all these other margin factors that we're gonna talk about when we talk about the profit limitness test. You know, using the word margin versus pro mar profit, we're gonna probably use the word profit a lot more regularly when we call about this the profit challenge or the profit litmus test, because when we talk about absolute dollars and cents, that's pr ultimately, I think, what we can all agree on and, and kind of, um, it's a term that I think, you know, is a percentage, it's all relative to your business model. And so we're gonna get into that and in a little bit further is, there's a whole bunch of different e-commerce business models here, but I just, to kind of make sure that we've covered off gross margin before we go down the path of looking at profit along the way, what we want to talk about is, first of all, identifying is what's your e-commerce business model? So, you know, I'm going to put up a few different options on the, on the table here and a few different definitions here, but, um, you know, there's kind of a difference, a wide spectrum of different e-commerce business models. So on the far sort of left-hand side, you've got what we would call affiliates or influencers. And this is how actually I got my start in uh, this whole sort of racket when it came to e-commerce business. I started off as actually a, an affiliate, believe it or not, where basically think of an affiliate or an influencer. Um, I'm not talking about, you know, the, hey, look at me on Instagram, I'm an influencer type of influencer. I'm talking about more real people that are offering real suggestions or real influence in terms of recommending products and services for you in your business or in your life. And so when I'm talking about an affiliate or influencer, I'm talking about someone that says, hey, you know, I read this book and it was really impactful in my life and this is what it means to me. If you're interested, go check it out over here. That to me is, is more of an influence thing than it is, hey, I've got this and that sort of thing. But long story short, we won't get into the debate about influencers, but it can be a, a very effective way of marketing. And so, you know, on the far right hand side, I started off doing affiliate marketing for a lot of software as a service and a lot of software products and tools that I was using. I even to this day still recommend a lot of tools and a lot of tips. And, you know, as you get to know me a little bit more, you'll probably follow me on social media. You'll see that I'm, I start to kind of refer you to different products or services or tools that, you know, are, have been helpful in my life. And, you know, for doing all that, you know, I do it not because during the commission necessarily. I do it more so because I just want to help people out and I want to make a difference in their life. And so, you know, that's what affiliate influencers are, is on one end of the spectrum. Then in the middle, you've got retailers or resellers. And, and retailers and resellers are your sort of historical, typical retail models. So think of these people as the Nordstrom's of the world, the Walmarts. This is how shopping malls came to be. If you go into a shopping mall, those are all retailers or resellers. They're most likely buying someone else's product, and then they're turning around and creating an experience for you to come in and buy it. And this is how typically the old model used to be in terms of how people would buy from the brands that they really liked and assimilated to. And then on the far right hand side, and this is kind of the new up and comers, would be what you call a direct to consumer brand. And so direct to consumer brand, you know, the model has been slowly shifting and changing where a lot of brands nowadays are skipping over the middleman of the retailer or their influencers or the affiliates, and they're just going straight to the consumer themselves and selling products and services. And so, you know, those are all the different, um, you know, sort of angles or spectrums of the e-commerce business models. So I want to do a quick poll here and just kind of see on the phone based on that information. And before I reveal sort of gross margins, I kind of want to do a quick sense, a quick poll here to see what kind of e-commerce retailer might you be. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quick poll up on the chat window. If you want to take a look, it's down on the bottom. Um, should come up in a second here. And once it does, if you could just go into the chat window and uh, take a quick peek and see, uh, and help me identify you as to what sort of poll you are or what sort of person you are. Okay, I see a direct consumer brand here, that's great. Anyone else? See a few others. I see a retailer in here. Another influencer. Okay, great. Well, that's great. So, you know, the thing of it is, is when we look at the poll, um, you know, it's okay to be whatever sort of retailer, distributor, you may be an affiliate influencer, you could be a direct consumer brand, whatever it is, you know, the longest and short of it is, is that a lot of these brands are people 
that um, you know you have an e-commerce business, that's great. So that's good. You're in the right place. You're not in the wrong place. So that's good to see. <laughs> so now when we talk about about gross margin and uh, gross profit, what we're talking about now is trying to understand well. At one end of the spectrum, you know, if I was going to generate a million dollars in revenue, what's my profit going to be out of the bottom of that? So if we take a look at some of the models here, what you can see is um, quite a bit of a difference. And on one end of the spectrum, you've got affiliates influencers that probably make somewhere in that sort of three to 20% points. You've got retailers and resellers in the middle that perhaps make 30 to 50% points. And then you've got direct consumer brands on the far right that are 60 to 80%. Now, these numbers are kind of just benchmarks based on e-commerce business models that are kind of more what we would call a traditional business to consumer uh, approach. But, um, you know, they also might be uh, different models depending on your industry. There could be different percentages, but these are just some of the percentages from my experience that I've looked at in terms of the clients that I've worked with and the people. So when you look at that, just give it pause for a second and think about, you know, kind of, where do you still slot in? Are you still on the direct to consumer brand side of things? Are you maybe on the affiliate influencer side of things? The retailer, reseller in the middle? It's up to you. And I mean, you don't, there's no right or wrong answer here sort of thing. It's just kind of kept to give context. So, you know, if we think about a, an affiliate influencer model, if we do the math again, you know, their gross profit is probably anywhere on a million dollars. Somewhere in that, if you do the math, sir, 3% of a million dollars, well, that's 3,000 to 20, you know, it could be 200,000 200, to about $30,000 in on a million dollars, right? You do the retailer reseller model, 30 to 50% on a million dollars, that's 300,000 to 500,000 in terms of gross margin and gross profit. And then you look at a direct consumer brand, they're anywhere from 600,000 to 800,000 in gross margin. So really what this tells us is that, you know, direct consumer brands are typically the ones that have the most margin in their business, the most profit in their business, but they also typically have probably the most control over their customers as well. And so as we dig a bit further into that, what we'll find out is we'll try to do, do a little bit more of the math to figure out, well, how do you add up to all these numbers? And, you know, how does that whittle down further? Because we, again, we are talking about gross margin here. When we start looking about profit margin, when we think through the litmus test, we're talking about product margin, we're talking about order margin, customer margin, and we're talking about conversion margin. And some of those play a factor into this. Remember, this is just on cost of goods sold which is only a fraction of some of those other margin things. So without further ado, that's kind of really it in a nutshell of today's lesson. I wanted to talk about about gross margin and gross profit. I hope you found it useful. I hope you found it interesting. If not, please let me know. I'd really like to make these sessions valuable for you and make it worth the time. You know, again, we're, we're sitting here over a cup of coffee and again, didn't have a chance to take a sip of mine because I've been yakking away. But I really want to make sure that these are informative for you, that they're useful for you, that they're, that they're actually giving you some sort of insight into your business. So thanks again for making your time today. I want to leave you with a quick message around being present today, connecting with others, and making an inference, impact and difference in someone else's life. So with that, I'm going to stop the recording now, and we'll, we'll head on over into the Q&A session.